Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course Reasoning and Logic. This one is about proving subset relations. And for our example today, we're going to prove that A minus B is a subset of the complement of C minus A for arbitrary sets A, B, and C. Now, let's check that with a picture first. So, we have the three sets A, B, and C, and A minus B is... Uh, yeah, that's right. It's this whole part. Now, what about C minus A? C minus A is right, that's this part. And then the complement of that, well, that's quite a lot, isn't it? But yeah, sure. So yeah, based on just the picture, it seems that the red part is indeed a subset of the green part. But remember, the picture is not a proof. So... Without further ado, let's delve into a proof for this claim, shall we? So where do we start? Well, remember that a subset means that all elements that are in A minus B must also be in the complement of C minus A. So let's take an arbitrary element of A minus B. And now we need to prove that this arbitrary element is also in the complement of C minus A. Now, if, in a, if x is in A minus B, what does that mean? It means that x must be in A, and also that x must be in B. Or x must not be in B. Apologies. So, x must be in A, and x must not be in B. But if x is in A, well... But if x is in A, then it, that must mean that x is in A, or x is not in C. Right? Remember that if we have... Right? Remember that from just B, we may logically conclude, or it is logically valid to conclude, that P or Q holds. So that means that X is in A or X is not in C, so that means if we apply the Morgan, not X not in A and X in C, ah, that must mean that X is in C minus A's complement by the definition of the complement. But that is exactly what we wanted to prove. So, there we go. Now, since x was an arbitrary element, it holds for all elements in the set, and therefore a minus b must be a subset of c minus a's complement. Now, although we're talking about set theory now, it's really not all that much more than what we did earlier in predicate logic when we, were when we were proving for all claims. We did that using a proof by generalization. And we do the same thing here. Take an arbitrary element, and as a result, it must hold for all of them. And with that, we've come to the end of this proof, and also this video. I'll see you around for the next one.